George? Oh. Don't you think it's about time you broke down and got a computer? Not unless it comes with a program that can make predictions. Predictions? Sure, predictions. You know what season it is. Sure, I know what season it is. It's autumn. Yeah, it's autumn. And what does that mean? Well, it means that I wear earth tones and tweeds. Right. It's also football season. Station insisted I predict the games every week again. I hate doing that. It makes a score the only thing that matters, and it ruins the essence of the game. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. What is the essence of the game? Well, the... the... Oh, forget it. The picks are that deep in the dumpster, huh? Triceptic tank. Hi, guys. Hi, honey. What's in your shirt? Oh, that? Oh, it's part of the tag. I'll take it out later. It's awful big for a tag. If this is a Playboy, you're going to handle it. Thanks a lot. What are you doing with a newspaper in your shirt? I think we should leave George to do his work. Yeah. All right, all right. Hold it. Hold it. Come on, Catherine. Give me the sports page. Well, I'll, I'll give it to you when I've read it. I read it all the time. Now, since when did you start reading the sports page? Come on, come on. Ages, don't I read yes, it? Yes, she reads it all the time. Thank you. Yes, I do. Yes, I'm particularly interested in uh, drag racing on Friday at 8 p.m. Drag racing, you know, that's her thing. That's her thing. Come on, Catherine. Let me look at it. Papadopoulos picks poop. Good luck. Coward. <laughs> look how big the, the type is. Why don't they just spray paint it on the bridge? Maybe it's a different Papadopoulos. Uh, George Papadopoulos, former All-Pro and local sportscaster, fortunately played the game a heck of a lot better than he can pick it. But it, look, see, it's next to a tire ad. I mean, how important can it be, right? How important can it be, Catherine? This paper has over a million circulation. Yeah, but the only people they're going to read are the people with flat tires, and they're not home anyway. <laughs> Oh, look at this, look at this. It goes on, it goes on. And he couldn't pick the outcome of a Rocky movie. Sure you could. Well, I got Monday night's game at least locked up. Miami always beats Green Bay at Green Bay. Good. It was a bone-chilling 10 below in Green Bay. But I don't suppose those Packers fans cared much, eh, George? Pew-wee! Your Miami team really stuck up the place last night. Thank you very much, Fritz, for pointing that out. Um, <clears throat> we'll be right back with sports, including a close-up look at a very unusual profession, hockey dentistry. Well, George, looks like you're still drawing double bagels on those predictions of yours. Fritz, I'm trying very hard not to pay any attention to you. Oh, hey, George, lighten up. By now, no one's paying any attention to what you say anyway. Redskins. 
city is no friend to umbrellas. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? This is my new system for picking winners, darling. The old one didn't work. Which was? Logic. Well, wouldn't it be easier to flip a coin? Yeah, I suppose it would be, but that way I wouldn't be able to throw anything. <laughs> you know what happened to me today? Jimmy the Greek phoned me. He laughed and then hung up. I have something that'll perk you up. Dr. Dreidelman, you know, down at the center, said to tell you that he never misses your predictions, and he just wants you to remember that this year, field goals are worth three points. They've always been worth three points. Really? Yeah, that's it. You know, Fritz is even getting to me, and I pride myself on being Fritz-proof. Honey, you're making too much of this, you know? You know more about football than all those guys put together. But that's not the point. I even blew the Green Bay-Miami game. I didn't want to say anything at the time, but that one even bothered me. And you know why? There probably weren't any four-star hotels near the stadium, so those boys from Miami probably had to stay at some cheap, noisy highway motel, and it just threw off their body clocks. Yeah, to the two to 52 to nothing. Well, I know. Life can be very depressing. I remember when I went to Switzerland with Muffy and Sissy. We went to ski, but there wasn't any snow, and we got so depressed. Suddenly, we found ourselves in this quaint little chocolate shop, sipping cafe au lait and sampling their semi-sweet. <laughs> and you know, they were all carved like the seven dwarfs. Oh, Dopey had a hazelnut filling that was to die. <laughs> I think the point is that you have to try and make the best of a bad situation. Yeah, that was a great story. I think I'll go to Switzerland till after the football season. <laughs> and that's it from the world of basketball. Now for another edition of Papadopoulos' Predictions. This is something that I know you're all looking forward to, so I'll go right into it. You know, I've been getting lots of mail about my predictions, and most of it unsuitable to be read on the air. <laughs> you little rascals. You know, some of you uh, may have even broken the law sending these things to me. <laughs> this one, for instance, is from a man from Peoria. He says... Dear Papadopoulos spells my name wrong. I think my sister should replace you and your predictions. Maybe that could be arranged as soon as she is allowed out of, get this, the Soviet Union. <laughs> Quite cute, Steve. Here's another one. You people. <laughs> George, my mother can pick better than you, and she has been dead for six years. I have no intention of bringing any members of your family on this show. However, a member of my family, well, that might be a different story. So, here to do the football predictions today is none other than my gorgeous wife, Catherine. <laughs> And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm retiring. That's right, I'm retiring from the world of pigskin prognosticating. However, Catherine, my wife, being a practicing psychologist, will use her unique perspective and insight to predict this weekend's game. Freud over Dr. Ruth by nine. Hey, who's first? Denver's in New York, darling, to play the Giants. Didn't you tell me that the Denver Fat Ann's wife just had a baby? Yes, I did tell you that. And it's not the Fat Ann's wife. It's a Tight Ann's wife. Whatever. I think you're going to see that that birth will bring out the paternal side of the Denver players, and there'll be a kind of protective aggressiveness, and they'll score a run every chance they get. It's not a run, darling. It's a touchdown. Whatever. Talk about psycho babble. <laughs> the Indianapolis Colts and the Saints. The game is in New Orleans. Oh, the jambalaya in New Orleans is awfully heavy, especially if you're not used to it. I think I'd go with the home team on that one. Oh, you're going to take the jambalaya factor? A coach's nightmare. I hear Vince Lombardi snickering in his grave. <laughs> and finally, sweetheart, the L.A. Rams against the Dallas Cowboys. Rams. Oh, are they the ones with the strange costumes? 
They have blue helmets with little horns on them, but other than that... That is so distracting. I'd have to take the Rams. You'll go with the Rams. Well, thank you very much, sweetheart. And to think some people rely on stat sheets. <laughs> this is George Papadopoulos saying you don't have to play sports to be one. Night, everybody. Stop and go at the coffee table. Hit me at the desk. Break! <laughs> Ready? On three. Blue, 82. Blue, 82. Ready? Hut, hut, hut! Oh, what's going to the snap? He fades back. He's looking for a receiver. Right here. No one's open. I'm open. He sees an opening. There's no choice. He must take it himself. You don't pass, I don't block. <laughs> and he, he scores! <sighs> Great play. That's what I love about football. All the teamwork. <laughs> Look, no scores. Oh, I'm stuffed. That brunch was a great idea. Well, darling, that was my way of saying thanks for being such a good sport. And actually, it was kind of fun to watch those people recognize you from the show. All the waiter said was, you look sort of familiar. Exactly, and that's what they used to say to Diane Sawyer. Really? Guys, guys, come look. Mems are ready, one for two, and ahead in most of the other games. Really? Come on, come on. Only the Broncos are losing. Who are the Broncos again? They're the ones that had the new baby. Oh, those Broncos. Put the sound up, Lamb. Here are more scores. New Orleans over Indianapolis. Huh. Oh. Three. Rams over Dallas. Yeah! Three for four? And a big upset. The Broncos on a last-second reception beat New York. And tight end and new papa, Skip Feiner, fought off five defenders to make that catch. Four out of five? Wow! Is that good? That's better than I've done all season. I know, but is it good? Of course it's good, darling. How would you like to come on the show the rest of the year? Oh, I don't know. Come on, it'll be fun. The next time the waiter will recognize you and know your name. We, we might even be able to cut in the front of the line. Come on, Why not? <laughs> Thereby becoming the first Mouseketeer ever to swim the English Channel. <laughs> And now, riding a hot streak of 10 out of 13, here's our own Gene Dixon of the Gridiron, Catherine Papadopoulos. Please, please, it's a gift. Ha, ha, it's a gift. It's cute. So, darling, we're all waiting with bated breath. Who's your pick for tonight's game? Will it be the Seattle Seahawks or the Minnesota Vikings? Tell me that the Vikings coach was feuding with their hatchback? Halfback, halfback, darling. Yes, yes, they're at each other's throats. Well, that sounds like a textbook father-son struggle. Now, Stieglitz makes some fascinating points on the subject, and then again, Shapiro's counter-arguments are also very convincing. So which one do you like? I think I'd have to go with Stieglitz on this one. So what team do you like? Oh, the one that's not fighting. That kind of struggle poisons the air for everyone. Well, Vikings, it sounds pretty hopeless for you guys, so you might as well stay home and run a video. And remember... Oh, can I do it? Of course. You don't have to be a sport to play one. In commercial. George, Catherine, you guys are the Torvald Dean of football predicting. How about some publicity photos for the show? Oh, no, I can't. I, I'm late for a board meeting over at the community center. You know, it's budget time, and if I'm not there to make a stand, I, I'm not going to get my felt board. <laughs> some other time, then. Okay. Because the momentum on this thing is incredible. Oh, Fritz, starting next week, we're cutting a minute from your segment for sports. What? <laughs> Yeah, 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 Mr. Alonzo, I'm on top of it. I'm at that football lady's office now. Don't worry. I'll find out who she likes and all the rest of the games will make a killing. <laughs> Regards to the family.
You must be Mr. DeMarco. The name is Lou Donuts DeMarco. You can call me Donuts. Well, thank you, Mr. Donuts. I'm Catherine Papadopoulos. And usually, I sit there and the client sits here. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was making a local call. Here. Here's five bucks. Oh, no, no, no. That's not necessary. Oh, I insist. Donuts pays as he goes. Now, look. I'm a busy guy. So can we get down to business? Oh, a marvelous attitude. Absolutely. What brings you here? I don't know who I like this week. Oh. Everybody has weeks like that. <laughs> Some weeks I don't like anybody. Well, who do you like this week? Well, it's not the problem, is it? The problem is, who do you like? Hey, if I knew that, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> well, are you saying that you're not getting along with anyone? Nah, I get along with everybody. Uh, except Vinny the Squirrel the Dino, but he works out of Cleveland. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Donuts. I'm not getting a fix on why you're here. Lady, I'm a gambler and I'm not winning. I need your help. A gambler? That's good. Oh, now that is a big step you have made admitting that. Hey, that's why I'm here. I'm just a simple guy looking for an edge. <laughs> oh, there's nothing simple about this, but making that commitment is a start. Oh, I get you. How much commitment do you want, huh? Clothes? Jewelry? A truckload of cigarettes? Please. Um, I am talking about an emotional commitment to solve your gambling problem. Oh, lady, you show me how to pick the winner of the Green Bay Dallas game, and I ain't got no problems. Are you saying you came here for a football prediction? Hey, don't limit yourself. I'm open basketball, hockey, the flats, the trots. Mr. DeMarco, I am a professional psychologist. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm in trash removal. Now, I am prepared to make this worth your while. Out. Now, wait a minute. I am not talking small potatoes. Out. Okay. Okay. I'm out of here. Just, uh... Don't let me hear you helped anybody else. <laughs> hi, Mrs. Papadopoulos. Oh. Hi, Tony. My father wants to know who's gonna win the Saints-Eagles game. <laughs> Tony, out. Okay. <laughs> Sweetheart, look at all the fan mail you're getting. You're getting more popular than Engineer Mike and his cartoon caboose. George, a mobster came to see me today. Really? Yes, a thug, a wise guy named Lou Donuts DeMarco. I thought he was going to break into luck be a lady tonight. Did he do anything? No, I threw him out as soon as I found out all he wanted were gambling tips. Oh, well, don't worry about it, darling. Donuts sounds like a small timer. It's names like snake and fingers you gotta worry about. Hey, guys, these must be some awesome lamb chops. The brown spiegel followed me all the way home. Oh, thanks, Jim. Oh, don't forget, I'm having dinner at Charlie's. It's Cam Ravioli night at his house. All right, well, be nice. You know, ask him if you could do the dishes or something. That's the best part. They eat it right out of the can. <laughs> See ya. Have fun, honey. Here, sweetheart. Oh, I'm starving. Choice chops for the champ chooser. And if your Sunday picks do as well, you'll never pay for meat again. Did you get this? <laughs> you should have said Webster to the jewelers. <laughs> Here, this is getting out of hand. I can't believe people are actually taking me seriously. Why not, darling? You're on a hot streak. I know, but people are actually betting a lot of money on this. Well, of course. That's why you're getting all this fan mail. Betting football games is a multi-million dollar operation. I know that. I, I mean, I just thought it was all professional. These people are expecting me to make them rich. Not all. I'm sure there's one marriage proposal in there. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Dear Mrs. Papadopoulos, I can't thank you enough. I cashed in an insurance policy and bet it on one of your picks and parlayed the winnings into a trip to Vegas. <laughs> Well, that's it for the hockey scores. <clears throat> now, it's time for our weekly football picks. 
Are you ready, great swami? Well, before I say anything, to you, Mr. Frank K. from LaGrange, Illinois, betting your mortgage money on my picks, what if I'm wrong? Where would you live? And you, Mr. Donuts, you have a problem. Get a real job. <laughs> now, I appreciate all of the kind words and attention, but obviously, I don't know the first thing about football. I mean, I don't know a backfield from a cornfield, an end zone from a school zone. I mean, really, I'm just up here blowing smoke. Now, what you do with your money is your business. But I refuse to be responsible for someone's rent money or for their college fund riding on my picks. So, if it means paying for my own rump roast for the rest of my life, so be it. Because I quit. And you people say I can't pick them. 